My name is Glenn Jordan and I uh, live in Bangor, but originally from Brain, County Wicklow. Yeah, a journey is a good way of describing it. Uh, um, and like a lot of these things for me, it was a bit like a bit of a story that um, there was no kind of blinding insight or no, uh, you know, no argument that convinced me of anything. I found myself in a new place really through a relationship with a friend. We were, we were doing some work together and um, I was driving and he was a passenger in the car. And we were driving, I could take you to the very place in Belfast, we were on the motorway coming into the city. And um, we were just chatting about things, whatever it was. And he said, uh, by the way, I have something to tell you. And um, passing, just, just coming in to, uh, into the city, uh, he, he told me he was gay. This was, it was 15, 20 years ago. I didn't... I wasn't consciously aware that I knew anybody who was gay, but I'd known this guy for a long time, and and I, um, I have a distinct memory of being quiet for like ten seconds, and just saying right, okay, and then quiet again, and then before we hit the Westlink, I remember saying to him, "So would you mind, since I know very little about this, would you mind if?" as we, over the coming, over the next while, can I ask you questions? And um, he said yes. And, and that was it. So we just did, went about our usual relationship as we, and every so often, I, I, you know, we'd, we'd chat. And, um, and I was interested in his faith and how he sustained faith. And what it was like for you know people like me who were ignorant or people who were antagonistic, and how do you live with these things? And and I I realised after a lot of years really of talking with him and and then with other people I met that I was having to reevaluate how I had thought previously. I mean, I was never I never felt like I was antagonistic or. But I just found that the encounter with this friend and one or two others then over a course of time resulted in change. And because I was having to read my Bible, and I take that really, really seriously, having to read my Bible through the lens of these friends and through the reality of their faith and their experience. And, um, and there was a form then it was a form then of conversion, I think, that this, to, through their friendship and their openness and obvious faith, I, I needed conversion in how I thought about these Bible texts and how I thought about the LGBTQ community and, and so on. And it literally was just a realization one day I don't think about my friend the way I would have if I had had to consider this as an issue rather than this as a person. And uh, um, that was what I think, that's where the change happened. And it, it, the change it wasn't just a kind of mind shift change that, you know, in who this person was. It was through this person in particular, I remember one time something was in the media, I can't remember what it was, and um, we happened to be meeting that day for coffee. And I was kind of all, you know, oh, this is what, you know, we've got to say, you've got to say something. I mean, are we going to want to put out a statement? Are we going to? And he said, that's not my problem, that's yours. I, um, and I re this is the second transformation in which I realised. Yes, if I'm outraged on his behalf about what this person has said, um, I can't just turn to him every time to be the person who fronts up some kind of pushback on this or some kind of alternative um, comment, that I had a responsibility as well. 
um, that I needed to be saying something, that I needed, you know, to put my voice into this, uh, this conversation and dialogue, debate and argument that was going on. That it wasn't sufficient to kind of give my mate the thumbs up and, uh, and when he was taking on the challenge that I needed, there were times I needed to be there in whatever way I could. So that change over, over the years has happened, happened from that car journey, which I remember so clearly. And, he, and he's probably forgotten. I look now that it was a major turning point, but, but at the time it was a kind of, um, well, it was a, I, I, I think how, because I'm sure this wasn't him coming out to the world. This was him coming out to me. I, I suspect everybody else must have known that, and I was probably one of the last, because I was so kind of... It just wasn't a... It, it just never occurred to me. It was just my friend. Um, so looking back, I would see that it was a turning point, because I knew him as a person. I knew him as my friend before... Uh, uh, he presented me with the fact that my friend was gay. And that, so then, in the coming days and weeks after that, I had to figure, does the fact that he's gay change the prior relationship we had? Of course it didn't. It, it, of course it didn't. And, um, you know, so in his generosity then, in being able to answer my daft questions uh, helped me helped me grow in my understanding and helped me you know when I needed to read the Bible text I was reading it as I said through the lens of my friend and our friendship um, and uh, and with the result then that you know another friend who um, through crisis in his life and uh, in re being in, in relationship with him through those crises, for a long, long time, uh, the fact of his being gay was, uh, was the kind of, was an important aspect. And I remember, um, I remember one time we shared a car journey together uh, from the north coast down into Belfast. And then we stopped in Belfast for a coffee. And we'd been together in the car for an hour and a half. We'd been sitting drinking coffee for another 45 minutes or an hour. And it suddenly occurred to me something. I turned to him and said, you realize we haven't once talked about the crisis situation in your life in previous years or you know, I realized we had got over and beyond the issues of his sexual orientation, which had always been an issue of a conversation between us. We were now just two friends. And we hadn't mentioned it at all. And we both laughed. We were sitting in a well-known coffee chain on Botanic. And uh, we both laughed because, yeah, we realized we've got to that place where it's just a friendship now. And, you know, the fact of his sexual orientations matters no more and no less than mine. Because, you know, who has conversations about these things in the normal course of life when things are good between friends? So those, for me, it's the relationships, the connections with people. It's, it's you know, it's the conversations and it's the normal things of, of life with a person that have, has enabled me to awake at, at, and find that actually my theology has changed. Without there being a dramatic, oh, now the arguments all add up and I can now make a shift, it just happened through relationship. And I, for me, I think that it, the, the that's, that's 
that's conversion that isn't an instant. I do worry sometimes that we think if we can sit down and, and win the argument over the clobber texts, we can persuade somebody. But it, it, that, that can't ha- I just don't think that happens anymore. I, I, well, it didn't happen for me. I do think it, 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 the conversion happens and then you see things differently and you understand things differently. Um, it's why I think we cannot do this work with books alone. We cannot write doctrinal statements or uh, um, as if it was a forensic exer- exercise and then carry it over here into the real world. It has to be done in the context of relationship. People. Always with people. I, um, always with people. And... Um, and I, I think far, far, far too often when we imagine this is a, this is an argument to be won rather than a relationship to be built. I think an argument to be won is always going to be hard, and it's always going to be a battle. Um, so, but we, but we can make that change if we can find ways of having good conversation, good dialogue and friendship. And um, and then there's nothing dramatic. I think if we're open to that, it, it's me that needs to change. You know, it's not him or her or whoever else. It's me that needs to change. Yes, there'd be there'd be my hopes for inclusion that that um, for everyone's sake, but particularly for the LGBT community, that we all get beyond the point where they have to make an argument for who they are. Um, that uh, and as a uh, that their sexual orientation or as one of my friends talks about um, their erotic activity matters no more no no less and is of no more interest than my erotic activity in a room somewhere it just is just is and uh, we don't have to be prurient about it or inquisitive about it or i want to get this is there are there are other things that we would be better doing together, challenges that in the world that we'd be better doing together than cl- clashing on this all the time. Yeah, so it just becomes, it becomes the kind of thing that happened with that friend and me in the coffee shop that we suddenly kind of think, do you know what? We haven't had to think about that or talk about that. It just is no longer an issue between us. It's just, this is just a deep, meaningful, friendly relationship that is valuable to to all of us. That's where I'd hope to get. And um, we can fall out over lots of other things, but why can we fall, you know, why? It just seems daft to me that, that we're falling out over who you are. You know, that that strikes me as odd. What I'd like to see for this resource is that it's an opportunity um, to present people's stories, to put people's stories in front of others so that they are uh, encountering the stories of human beings who are, like all of us, struggling to make sense of faith in the context of our world. And um, these people just happen to be gay. Um, and uh, we put their stories in front, we match it you know, with conversation, um, and uh, that it, it can play a part in the, in the transformation of relationships. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Um, well, I think part of it, f- by putting by by putting interviews in front of people, putting 
film in front of people. It also, again, I think the burden we put upon the LGBT community to talk about intimate things about their lives so that I can come to a better understanding of the issue. I just think that's unfair. And um, so at one level, a resource like this lessens the burden on people because they're not physically being put out there, but their image is. But then I think it also can serve a useful purpose by putting out there genuine stories of people struggling to be people of faith in the world, like we all do. So there are these points of connections between anybody who's struggling to make faith work in the world. We make these connections. We build uh, connections between people and people's stories. Um, and, uh, and then slowly that transformation happens in the context of those points of connection. Yeah. Get your hair cut quicker than you did. Don't let it get that long again. Um, I think what I might want to say is um, don't be so scared of um, of relationships. Um, don't imagine that you can ever muster enough data in a book um, or in a lecture or a sermon that will ever enable you to make sense of people's lives. The only way to do that is to be with people. So I would say go and make friends. Um, don't stress the theology stuff. Let that resolve itself in the context of relationship because I'm convinced that the heart of good theology is incarnation. Um, we are, you know, our theology is incarnated in a body um, and, and we make and we do good theology through encounters with other bodies. So go make friends and let the theology look after itself through, the, through encounters with your friends.